이렇게 오늘 사이먼트를 보면 오늘 해당된 월시트하고 같이 어 이렇게 세션 에이 서포먼트 피어 세스먼트라고 있거든 그것도 한번 열어서 봐줬으면 해 그래서 일단 오늘 같은 경우는 저번 주에 내준 숙제가 있잖아 어 uh, it was about uh like arguing on a topic that you guys felt passionate about so we're going to be moving on to presenting those at the start of the class and I noticed that quite a few of you guys like couldn't really work on it like 이거를 뭐다 준비를 못한 친구들도 많이 봤어 그렇더라도 뭐 아무것도 안 하고 넘어가면 내가 보기에는 that would kind of reveal you guys reveal who you, who you are like 누가 아는지 막 티나게 되는 점도 있고 and I thought that it wasn't really good for you to like just miss it entirely so I just so for those of you guys who are not prepared I think you guys should be 다른 사람들이 프레젠트 하는 동안 잠깐 준비해서 이렇게 발표해도 괜찮을 것 같다 so it's fine if it's 30 seconds one minute or like even one minute 30 seconds like 길어도 좋고 짧아도 좋은데 한번 막 아직 준비가 크게 안 됐다면 막 내가 옛날부터 이 자리를 빌어서 어떤 자리가 나한테 주어지자면 뭐꼭 해보고 싶었던 말 그런 걸 한번 생각해보고 잠깐 말하는 연습을 가질게 그리고 어 Peer Assessment Sheet이라고 내가 우리가 거기 같이 뭐랄지 클랩해놓은 게 있잖아 파일이 So if you guys would open this As you guys uh, listen to the presentation Each people are assigned with four people 어, 각 사람마다 네, 네 명의 이게 프레젠테이션 프레젠터가 이렇게 주어져 있어. 그러면 어, 네 개가 주어져 있는 이유는 like of all those four people, like some people might not come. 그네명 중에서 안 오는 사람도 있고 그럴 수도 있으니까 저, 내가 네명 골랐어. 어. 아, 네. 응? 오케이. 그러면 어, 프레젠테이션을 들어보고 이두명한 프레젠테이션을 한두 명을 골라 갖고 그 중에서 I want you guys to answer this question. And first question is name of the presenter. 누가 presentation 하는지. What is the presenter advocating for and why? 뭐 어떤 토픽에 대해서 presentation가 presenter가 얘기하고 있고 도대체 왜 그거에 대해서 얘기하는지. And second one is how it can be achieved. 저번에 main line, three main questions 한 것처럼 이게 presentation가 말하는 포인트가 어떻게 이렇게 현실화될 수 있는지. And third one is, what are some tools used by the presenter to create a success, successful argument? What are some things that the presenter can work on to create a better argument? 어떤 이렇게 도구들, 옛날에 배웠던 ethos, pathos, logos, 그런 것 같은 어떤 도구들을 이용해서 프레젠테이터가 이렇게 잘 프레젠테이션을 하는지 아니면 좀 이런 점은 고쳤으면 되게 되게 더 괜찮아지겠다 싶은 점들. And last one is, how have your thoughts on the topic changed after listening to the presentation? So the presenter is like talking about a certain topic, a topic that they're passionate about. 되게 열정적으로 느끼는 토픽에 대해서 프레젠테이션을 만든 사람이 프레젠트를 하지. 그러면 열정적으로 그렇게 프레젠테이션을 해준 만큼 그거를 듣고 내가 이 토픽에 대한 마음이 뭐 어떻게 바뀌었는지. So those are the four questions and you guys won't be doing this for all. Like as you said, 위에 여기 주어진 이름 네개 중에서 두 개만 골라갖고 한 사람 두 개만 골라갖고 하게 될 건데 I want to, you guys don't have to like write the whole essay on it but then I still want you guys to 그래도 좀 어느 정도 썼으면 해 여기는 그래서 I think we'll be moving on to the presentations 그러면 아 이거 비디오는 안 켜도 좋은데 그러면 혹시 어 예지부터 시작해 볼래? 혹시? 저 맞죠? 음. 응. Even though some people think smoking should be should not be banned, nevertheless, smoking should be banned because of health, littering, and there will be more positive things happening in the world. For a long time, people knew that smoking is bad for people's health, but they still sold cigarettes. From smoking, many people died because their body got weaker and weaker. From smoking, more than 480,000 people died 
reside in the United States. From smoking, your circulation, her heart, stomach, skin, bones, brain, lungs, mouth, and throat gets seriously damaged. It's very sad to imagine people smoking getting their body weaker, which makes them suffer in a lot of pain. People litter the bottom part of the cigarettes, which call cigarette butts, on the floor. From littering, the environment gets impacted. I saw people littering cigarettes on the fields, which looked very bad. Cigarettes are made of more than one third, nearly 38% of all collected litter. That's a lot. Cigarette butts contain toxic chemicals, which can affect the environment and the animals because they eat it and get poisoned. From smoking, we know that it affects animal, the environment. So if we ban smoking, what would happen? There would be a 5% reduction in global deforestation. There would be fewer pesticides and chemicals that cause soil and water pollution and fewer forest fires. From banning smoking cigarettes, there would be so many positive things happening in our world. Also, it will make people's lives healthier. Because of those reasons, smoking should be banned. Thank you. Okay, like, as you gave us an excellent example of how, it should have, how, how this is to be done. 근데 혹시 준비 안한 친구들도 좀 있고 뭐 힘들 수도 있겠어. 근데 혹시 잠시만이라도 like I still want you guys to like even if it's really short just say a few words about what you're passionate about. Like 그래서 다른 사람들이 present 하는 동안 혹시 내가 아직 준비 못 했다 하면 조금이라도 이렇게 해 갖고 말도 쓰면 해. 내가 cuz I want to hear from everybody. And I hope you guys are working on the peer assessment sheet as well. 한번 다음은 선린이가 해볼래? 네, um, my topic I chose was why you should drink a lot of water. My first reason is because water helps your kidney and other organs. Since water is the main sor source of multiple organs, if you want to be healthy, you need to drink a lot of water. The second reason why you should drink water is because drinking helps circulate your body's blood. To pump blood to every part of your body, you need to drink water, which is the which is ninety percent of the blood. The last reason why water can help your skin, uh, the last reason is that water can help your skin. If you don't want wrinkles and skin disorders, you need to take care of your body by drinking water. Although you might prefer juices and other beverages, you might want to change. You might want to start changing your choice and take care of your body. You should drink a lot of water because it helps your organs, skin, and helps circulate blood through your body. That was it. Okay, excellent job. Okay, set point to you guys. They get okay, clear again. Today's on the Thank you. Drinking water is important. Okay, 그러면 다음은 어 혹시 시우가 해줘 볼래? 시우. If you guys have problems with mic, 혹시 말해 줄수 있어, 미리? 그럼 제일 좋을 것 같다. Because, yeah, okay. Off you go. I believe our school should allow us to put our bags on the floor, not on top of the lockers. Most of the time, we have a hard time trying to follow the rules the school has set for us, leaving our backpacks on top of the locker or in it. For middle school students, the locker, our lockers are quite small, so our backpack may not fit in it. When we put the backpacks on top of the locker, we take a lot of time. Consequently, we are late and have to wait or be seated at the far end of the room. A lot of students around me have complained about this, so I think it could be achieved if the students with the same opinion as me ask the school about this. Okay, excellent job. 그러면, 그리고 as you guys listen to questions, uh, peer assessments 우리가 하는 이유는 뭐, 이렇게 서로가 서로에게 어떤 도움이 될수 있고 내가 상대방이 이렇게 프레젠테이션 하는 거면서 어떤 뭘 배울 수 있고 어떤 점을 배울 수 있는지 하는 거기 때문에 I hope you guys really like look into those four questions as you listen to other people's presentations. 그러면 다음은 혹시 혜인이가 해볼래? Okay. Um, okay. 
great, sorry. My topic is why you should not wear your uniforms. Do you not like your uniforms? Students should not be forced to wear uniforms. First of all, uniforms are uncomfortable and I should know because I'm a student. They are itchy, they are tight, they are stiff. The uniforms are thick and do not accommodate the weather. Secondly, we all have our own sense of style. Many students like to wear cute things. Some people like to wear hoodies, but we are all stuck in a button down shirt and some pants. These kind of enforcements restrict students from expressing themselves. Finally, they are too expensive. When you buy your clothes, you buy comfortable clothes that are cheap or on a gift or are on a discount, but it seems like a waste that we are spending more than a thousand baht just to buy a uniform that is not necessarily needed. Okay, excellent job. And he started off with us with the excellent hook, and then she used like pathos to relate how like other people could want to wear different types of clothes, and then she used ethos on how to like, well, there's credibility as she, since she's a student herself, so, I hope you guys listen to this as you, as we do the, yeah, as we listen to each other's presentation. Okay, great job. 혹시 그러면 다음은 어 보경이가 해볼래? 혹시? 보경 is away from the keyboard. 어, 혹시 유겸이가 해줄 수 있어? 이번에는? Like, if I could say something to the, yeah, if I could, 이 자리를 빌어서 뭐 내가 어떤 하고 싶은 말이 있거나, like something you really feel passionate about. 저요? 음. Oh, like my argument is kind of long. 어, like, 우리가 뭐, 막 10분을 쓸 수는 없지만 뭐 like if it's still like if you could get it down to a reasonable length that's fine. Can you give me time to kind of summarize everything? Okay, sure. 그러면 조금 이따 돌아오도록 하고 혹시 그러면 지원이가 한번 해볼래? 네. 음, 네. So my topic is that children should be restricted with contents online as they are there are many provocative contents online and when people are children are exposed to these contents they can be negatively influenced children are not able to control what they watch so when they are not restricted online they will not be they will be too relying of the internet. Okay. Excellent job, guys. 그러면 혹시 어 그러면 다음은 음. 하늘이가 혹시 해 볼래? 저 아직 못 썼어요. 오케이, 그럼 내가 시간을 더 줄게. 성민이, 혹시 성민이가 해볼 수 있어? 다음은? 네. 오케이. Uh, my one is kind of short. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Studying with music isn't a bad way of study. Music disconnects noises from outside of world such as dogs howling, traffic sounds, and noises in houses. So one, what, one more benefit of studying with music um, if my father allowed me to study with music. Music helps students beat, beat per exam stress and anxiety. And psychologists suggest that Mozart music helps to memorize. If so, which genre of music would be, if so, what genre of music would be the best music to study alone? The best music to study alone is background music, music are peaceful and calm music that makes you comfort. Okay, that was really excellently put. So, yeah, claps on you for that.
오케이. 그러면 다음은 혹시 정연이가 해줄 수 있어? 어, 네. 오케이. So my topic is uh, students should wear school uniforms. So okay. students should wear school uniforms because they can get the same opportunities opportunities with others. Besides, uniforms help poor students feel more comfortable when they study with other students at school. There is no difference between them and they can develop their friendship and they will um, focus on their studies. Uh, uh, secondly, school uniforms also make students feel proud of their school. For example, If there is a meeting and they're required to con connect with students from many different schools, wearing school uniforms helps students feel more confident and they participate in activity activities voluntarily with high efforts to demonstrate their school is good. Furthermore, students are wearing uniforms also feel proud of their school if other people recognize them outside of the school. So in conclusion, Uniforms are not only help students be distinct from other people to be more beautiful, but also make them feel equal to other students. Uh, and they can proud of their current schools if they are recognized by lots of people. Therefore, uh, students should wear Yes, your introduction was clear. Uh, your body paragraph structures were also clear, like they were really The main points were really good, and then the conclusion was like really there as well. So nice job. So 그러면 다음은 예승이가 혹시 해줄 수 있어? Is it? Mm. Okay, 그러면 혹시 아까 어 아까 난좀 시간 더 필요하다 했던 사람 중에 나 준비됐다고 하는 사람 혹시 있어? 저요. 오케이, okay, 그러면 한번 해주시, 해주시. 아 이거 우리 숙제 한거 하는 거 맞죠? 어 맞아 맞아. 아 오케이 오케이. So my topic is on why parents should give their teenage children more freedom and free will. It's important for young adults to start getting a sense of independence and responsibility. It's also unhealthy for both parents and their children to keep holding a grudge against each other regarding these matters and refraining it will only tear their relationship apart. The fights between families on who holds the upper hand in making choices for their kids is often tiring, and I, as one of the teens myself, think that the right should be handed over to ourselves. Making your, your own rules instead of always following what your parents apply will help even out the stress and give you more free will. For instance, my parents don't like it at all when I grow my nails beyond a centimeter. I can never understand why the why they fuss about it so much, and I don't know why they say it's not what a student should be doing. Then what is the behavior of a real student? Being all formal, neat, and clean? It's definitely a generation gap problem. For all just teens, for goodness sake, those little things parents hold up on your heads are the most irritating of positions, and teens should be able to do whatever they want with their bodies because it's theirs, not their parents' little possession, all the more as they grow up. The more they grow, the less responsibility parents have over them. They should know better to let go and give them the freedom. Parents tend to want themselves to choose for their kids regarding their future and take away their own common human rights. Teenagers like me know what line to cross and what not to cross. They know what's good and what's not and what's acceptable and what's not. The fact itself is enough for parents to back off a little and stop telling them what to do and give a whole lecture about it. Moms and dads think their kids aren't mature enough to take matters to their own hands, but they're more than the biggies think. It's true that teens often lose their parents' trust by committing something stupid without thinking straight. 
but it doesn't make them irresponsible and incapable. If parents holding their children's free will and responsibility is a way of caring for them, they should change their methods. Giving more free will and allowing freedom to teenagers will solve the tension between them and their parents. And it offers the chance to prove parents that their kids are both capable and reliable. Here. Okay, I was able to notice that you're really passionate about this and then your argument was really well explained and well put, so great job. あ、괜찮아요。괜찮아。 because like a large part of this is speaking, so 그 자리에서 자기 생각을 말하는 것도 연습을 해보는 게 중요하기 때문에 한번 짧아도 아직 괜찮은 마무리, 어? 아직 마무리 못 지었는데 일단 말씀드릴게요. 어, 괜찮아. Uh, so my topic is that uh, do we must exercise every day for like 그러니까 저, 그, 형 탑픽 아무거나 해도 되는 거죠? Mm, of course. So, uh, 그러니까 이 탑픽이 운동을 무조건 모든 사람이 당연한 듯이 해야 되냐 이런 건데. Mm. So, uh, I think uh, people don't have to do the exercise. I mean, all the people. The reason is because everyone have their own opinion with the uh, what they're doing, and also they have uh things that they like and all the people have individual habits that they can reduce the stress uh but however on the other side the we you can think that uh we must exercise because of our healthy and some other uh to develop our muscles but people don't really have to do because they're uh they're it's their choice so uh i think i don't i don't think everyone should do exercise okay it's fine that was well put and then i hope as you guys peer review uh okay uh, like when you guys write peer responses on that I really hope you guys like think how they use like eat those pathos logos, like how the clarity of their entire like speech slash presentation was, and then 그런 거를 설명하면서 내가 이 사람한테 이렇게 진심 어린 조언으로 뭐 어떻게 어떻게 하면 더 좋아질 수 있는지 뭐 그런 like 어떤 말을 남길 수 있는지 한번 생각해 보면서 so like that's what I kind of like hoping you guys as you guys write these responses for each other. So, 그리고 이 responses를 뭐다 써서 트레이닝하게 되면, so you guys are supposed to turn this in after class. 수업 끝나면 이렇게 트레이닝을 좀 했으면 하는데, 트레이닝하게 되면 이거를 어, let's say like 내가 나인이 거를 듣고 거기에 대해서 어떻게 썼어? 그러면 내가 쓴게 이렇게 나인이가 볼수 있게 내가 보내줄 거야. 근데 그게 like I'm not gonna say who did it. 누가 이렇게 누가 적었는지 내가 안 얘기해 줄까? Because like not being anonymous could like create some problems or like you guys might might not be confident enough to like give real advice. So it's going to be anonymous, but then you guys will be receiving feedbacks on. 그래서 피드백을 내가 다시 다 모아갖고 수업 끝나면 리턴해 주게 될 거야 내가. 정리를 해서, 오케이? Okay. 혹시 어 남은 사람들, are you guys ready to present? 예승이 한번 혹시 해줄 수 있어? 그럼 저 아직 못 썼는데요, 다. 
한 5분, 한 2분? 2분만 okay. 더. I'll give two more minutes, but then I think after that, we might be moving on, possibly, because, yeah. Like, as you guys speak, I don't really think that you guys have to be perfect in your examples. Or, 자기의, 이렇게, main argument, 자기가 이렇게 얘기하고자 하는 주장이 뭔지. 그리고, one or two supporting evidences. 그거를, 어, 이렇게, 주장을 앞세우기 위한, 이렇게, 뭐랄까, 증거, or like, 내시, 뭐 그런 것만, like, as long as they're clear, it's good, like, it doesn't have to be like elaborately developed because it's not a whole essay. No, 하나 에세이를 쓰는 게 아니니까 막 길게 할 필요 막 이렇게 되게 공들여서 할 필요는 없다고. Like, I think the most important thing and what we're trying to develop in you guys, 우리가 너희들이 이렇게 이걸 하면서 배워갔으면 하는 거는 이렇게 clear하게 clarity 되게 이렇게 어 뭐랄까 자기 주장이 이렇게 그냥하게 전달되는 잘 전달하는 연습을 하고 있으니까 어 그것만 할수 있으면 나는 like I think that's a, well ten out of ten for you guys so yeah please be mindful of that. So, 질문 있어요. 음. 그맨 밑에 아웃라인 써야 되는 거 있잖아요. 숙제. 어. 그거를 도대체 어떻게 써야 되는 건지 잘 몰라가지고 그 부분은 못했어요. 아, 아웃라인 같은 경우에는, like, so uh, outline is supposed to help you guys develop the argument like in a structured manner. 이렇게 뭐 주장을 하거나 이렇게 뭐 글을 쓰거나 말을 할때 형식을 주려고 있는 거야. So outline이 있으면 첫 번째는 너 메인 주장이 들어갈 거고 like main argument mm -hmm. and then 그뭐그 다음에는 like if it was a five paragraph essay that would be your like three points like 세 가지 메인 포인트가 들어가게 되고 아마 그리고 그 옆에 메인 포인트 옆에 메인 포인트를 백업하기 위한 evidence나 example 그런 거 위주로 아마 하게 될 거야. So like uh, outline is like a simple Simple like the main idea like 축약된 이렇게 너의 에세이를 이만큼으로 압축시키면 나오는 게 어, 아웃라인이야. 그래서 yeah, so that's why we're doing outlines. See, okay. was that good enough? Or? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, if I'm not. 내가 혹시 뭐잘 설명하고 있지 않는 게 있다거나 뭐 헷갈리는 게 있다면 항상 물어봐줘. Cause I'm not, a, I'm not such a great explainer myself, and if you guys don't tell me, I might pass along, like, not explaining something else, so. 혹시 그러면, 어, 예승이, 혹시, are we good? Uh, I only have two reasons, but. Yeah, it's fine. So my topic is, uh, school should be allowed to have a convenience store. Hmm. Well, um, the first reason why school should have a convenience store is that if students uh, were to take a test before uh, during lunchtime and don't have enough time to eat lunch they sh can have the time to buy a small snack before class so they won't 
starve for the rest of the day. Uh, and the second reason is that if uh, students have to stay after school for long periods of time, they could uh, get hungry or they might need a drink. Uh, then if there's a uh, convenience store in the school, then students could buy um, snacks. That's it. Excellent job. The main point was clear, your examples and well, your additional like points are really clear, so that was really good. She could It's fine if it's like simple. Okay. My topic is about how Grace International School should extend the lunchtime. First of all, 40 minutes of lunchtime is just too short for slow eaters like me. And even if people eat fast, most of them want time to chat and play with other friends. But with almost 10 minutes taking up reaching the cafeteria and getting in the line, it is very difficult to do them all. Also knowing that there is very short time, it can easily make people feel uncomfortable and end up having an upset stomach. Every time in lunchtime, I habitually check the clock once in a while to keep me from being late to class. I'm sure that I'm not the only one who is doing this in our school. Extending the lunchtime can make the students relax as they eat and will not be late in classes. So I insist that the lunchtime of Grace International School should be extended. Okay, that was excellent. She used pathos to like allow people to relate how the situation is and then she used uh, like her position as a student to like add a bit of cre credibility aspect as we learned last lesson aspect into her argument. So that was really good. Learning the Thai, they could don't tie so like so I could easily understand what all your arguments were and then your points were all really clear and then your arguments were generally all really compelling. So, 되게 잘했다고 칭찬해 주고 싶고, 내가 예상한 것보다 막 너무 잘해갖고, like, yeah, 진짜, nice job, guys. Okay, 그러면, we'll be moving on to the next part. 그러면, 이번 라인이가 맡아줄래? Okay, so today we're going to, because we've been working on a lot of speaking, especially with you guys doing your oral presentations. Our next thing that we're gonna do is a sort of open discussion. And we had a lot of open discussions at the beginning of this course when we first started, we'd read articles and we would kind of discuss our opinions on them. So, 이제 다음 할 거는 너네가 다 마이크랑 어, 카메라 컷, 켜졌으면 좋겠고, 디스커션 할 거기 때문에. 오늘 아티클보다는 조금 더 짧은 걸 읽을 건데, 자, 시작을 하기 전에 we have some questions that I think we should discuss before we start. So, first off, I want before we discuss anything to for you guys to number one, listen to each other as we speak because one very important thing about discussion is that if you're not listening to other people, then it's not really effective communication in a sense if you're speaking by yourself. So, 다른 사람들이 하는 말을 이제 you want to listen to what your peers are saying 그런 것다 새겨 들었으면 좋겠고 일단은 our first question for today is that we are going to define the word hate so how would you define hate when you think hate what is hate in your definition Something that's worse than disliking. Mm -hmm. Dislike but a chukum to sen tamoro, you could use hate. It's a more intense form of dislike. Anybody else? I think this is hate. Lathigen. Mm -hmm. That is a form of hate that discriminates based on somebody's race. So yes. What else can be considered hate, or what is what is hate in its essence? The opposite of loving. 
Mm -hmm. Opposite of love can be hate, right? So now for our next question, we're going to be looking at the document that we have for today. Just not here, but oh, let's see. Top. So we talked about what is hate, and now we're going to talk about why is different so often a reason for hate? Why do people tend to hate or discriminate against people that are different from them? What is the mentality behind that kind of hate? So, you know, she, you know, you know, you know, you know, Maybe it's because they think that we're not alike and that we're always compared to each other. So we want to seem like we're better and it turns into hate. Mm -hmm. That's one look at it. You can look at it like that too. Anybody else? Uh, yes. Uh, you might have one person that we had bad experiences with in a mm -hmm. certain group. Mm -hmm. Mm. I think it could be like because you love yourself. Mm -hmm. If someone is like the opposite of you, you hate them. Mm. So it could stem from self love. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody else want to give their opinion on that? why we hate people that are different from us. Or not even hate, why we dislike or are annoyed by people who are different from us. I think it's because like, what something that you think is normal is not normal to them. Mm -hmm. And like having that kind of difference in like everyday life or perspective just you just can't make it work with that kind of person so it just turns mm -hmm. out that you don't like them mm -hmm. that's also a good way to look at it we hate because what's normal for us is not normal for somebody else and we can't really come to terms with that in a sense so you guys will probably have seen in whether it's in um, personal relationships, in friend groups, or even on a larger scale in society, you will see that people tend to dislike people who are not like them, right? And whether it's on a larger scale or on a smaller scale, it's a continuing trend in a sense that whether you're the receiving side or you're the giving side, either you don't like somebody because they are different from you, or they, even if it's not their environment is different even if you're in the same environment you can like dislike somebody because they do things a different way from the way that you do it or they act in a certain way that's different from what you think is right and so these differences can often lead to hate whether you are the giving side or the receiving side of that hate or dislike so next thing that we're going to look at is probably you guys have not had um I'm not assuming that you guys have not had world history or AP world history experience yet, but does anybody, has anybody heard or know about apartheid? Is that a word or term that you have heard about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you think, even for, this is for everybody, whether you know or whether you have not heard of apartheid, when you hear the word apartheid, what do you think of? 
what do you think it would be about? And obviously I've kind of spoiled this because I kind of showed you guys the worksheet when I shouldn't have been. But when you think of the word apartheid, what do you think that it means? And what do you think, what kind of context are you thinking of it in? Anybody want to take a guess? It's kind of in the word, if that makes sense. When I say apartheid, there is a certain vocab word in there that most of you should know that indicates what it could be about. I guess the part, mm -hmm. something like separated or away from each other, something like that. I would have thought that if I didn't know the name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Anybody else want to add on to that? What they think apartheid could mean or be? Okay, so if we're not having anyone else who wants to guess i'm going to talk about apartheid because today we're going to read an excerpt from a book called cry the beloved country and it's a book writ written by alan payton and it takes place the term apartheid is kind of the background that it takes place in in a sense and so we're going to i'm going to briefly introduce apartheid to you guys and then we're going to read the excerpt itself. So, okay. So if you look here, it says apartheid, meaning apartness in the language of Afrikaans. Apartheid was a system of racial segregation in South Africa, or Damagun, for those of you who want in Korean, Damaprikakwango, that required the separation of whites and blacks and biracial people, Indians and Pakistanis by law. So it was a system that separated people by skin color. And I think that a lot of us have probably heard of this similar system in maybe in the US in 1950s, post-Civil War, that kind of thing. But I think apartheid is much less known than that kind of segregation. But nevertheless, it was a system that required that white people and people of color, so people who were not white, could not be affiliated or um, they could not come in contact with each other. And this went to the extent that it was not just a society's pressure thing, that it was a law. And so those of you have heard of Nelson Mandela, whether you've heard of him or not, Nelson Mandela was very actively involved in getting rid of this system because he believed that it was unjust that people were being divided and being discriminated against based on their skin color, which was something that they could not choose. So here are some details basically that might help you understand what was going on. So basically people were classified, they were put in different categories, you're white, you're black, you're colored, that kind of thing. And it was illegal for white people to marry people of other races. You can't, if you're white, then you cannot marry somebody who is not white. And if you are not white, you cannot marry a white person. And they separated the country of South Africa, which is a country, and they divided it into these parts where 80% of the land would be reserved for white people. And then you would have the other 20% that people of color were allowed to live in. But if you were a person of color and you wanted to travel to somewhere that was technically a white area, then you had to have a pass like identification kind of thing that required you to show that you were authorized to be there. And all these different things, white people and other people could not use the same like restaurants, same movie theaters, those kind of things. So it was very separated. It was a system of segregation that said white people and people of color cannot be mixed, cannot come in contact with each other because who knows why, because of skin color. And that was, a thing that was 
something that existed. And even though racism is very prevalent now, it was also prevalent 50, 100 years ago. So it says here, Cry the Beloved Country follows Stephen Kumalo, a black minister, on his journey to find his son in Johannesburg, the capital of South Africa, in the midst of apartheid. So during this period of apartheid, and Kumalo has a friend called Miss Mangu, who is coming with him as he's looking for his son. And so in this excerpt, it's very short, but Ms. Mangu talks kind of about the society that they're in, the injustice that they are seeing. So we're going to read this and He stood as though he was testing his exposition. Yes, that is right about power, he said, but there is only one thing that has power completely, and that is love. Because when a man loves, he seeks no power, and therefore he has no po has power. I see only one hope for our country, and that is when white men and black men, desiring neither money nor power, but desiring only the good of their country, come together to work for it. He he was brave and silent, and then he said, uh, some rarely, I have Somber. one great fear in heart, in my heart, some really, uh, that one day when they are turned to loving, they will find we are turned to hating. This is not the way to get to Dornfontein, he said. Come, let us hurry, and Kumalo, follow him kindly, oppressed uh, by the grave and some prayer words, some... Mm -hmm. Somber words. Okay, so you guys just read this excerpt in where Miss Mongo talks about basically the situation that the society, the injustice that they're seeing, and... So we're going to have a discussion on this, but before we go straight into discussion, so the whole point of this is that you guys are able to look at this, reflect on it, and be able to express your thoughts through speaking, because this is an English class. That is the goal of this class, that you guys are able to kind of practice this kind of speaking. So I'm going to give you guys like, until 7.55, kind of, 55. And if we need more time from then, we'll have more time. But to look at the questions that we have under here, and as you look at these questions, to kind of have a quick, like, writing down of what you think on is the answer to these questions. One thing I'm going to say is that there is no right or wrong to these questions. The reason we're having an open discussion is because it is important that all of you are contributing to the discussion, whether you, your opinion is, um, whether your opinion matches with someone else's or not. So there is no right or wrong answer, but please do spend some time writing it down and then we're going to have this kind of discussion on it. So, 지금 53분이니까, 혹시 몇 분까지 줄까? How much time do you guys I don't want to exceed 10 minutes. That seems too long to prepare for a discussion. But um,
자 그럼 57분이 됐는데 나는 시간이 더 필요하다 한 사람 오케이 그러면은 8시까지 시간을 조금 연장을 시켜줄게 8시가 됐으니까 이제 남은 30분을 가지고 디스커션을 해볼 건데 um, As I said earlier, there's no right or wrong answer so don't stress about having to present like this brilliant like answer it's not about that what's important is that whatever you guys are thinking right now that you guys are able to express that like coherently so that other people can understand that is what we're going for please do listen to your peers when they are talking That is the very basic, like it's the basis of communication in any form is that you listen to other people when they are talking and kind of, you can say, for example, oh, going off of what so-and-so said, and then you can elaborate an opinion on that. Even if it's not directly related to the question, if you have some thoughts on something that somebody said, then you are allowed to share. Please be nice to your peers. Don't be like, even though what so-and-so said is completely ridiculous, I think, Please don't do that. We're going to be nice to each other here for today, at least. So, 그리고 이제 discussion 할 거니까 다들 막 대면은 카메라를 켜줬으면 좋겠고. And let's begin. Okay. So the first question that we have as for discussion is We are defining power. So when you guys think power is dot dot dot, what is power? I guess power could be an, an authority over something. Mm -hmm. Power can be authority over something. Anybody want to add on to that or redefine? Uh, I think the power is the ability that you can protect yourself. Okay, that's so that's a type of power as well. Yeji? Power is when you can make your own choice and have the right to do anything you want. Mm -hmm. That is power as well. Anybody else want to say 
power is this. If not, then, so what I've heard so far is that power is this authority, whether it's over yourself, over your decisions, or whether it is an ability to protect what you want to protect, whatever it may be, that it is a kind of capability to do certain things. That is power in our definition that right now we have heard, which leads us to the next question. So Ms. Mangu is talking, and he's talking about the correlation, the relationship between love and power. And one thing I'm going to clarify here is that we're not talking necessarily about like romantic love. I think I would say this contributes more as a general love, whether it's for a leader's love for the people or a love for a friend or in this particular context, because we're talking about power, it would probably be a leader's love for their people, for their country, in that sort of sense of love. So he says that when a man loves, he seeks no power, and therefore he has power. How much do you agree with that? Can you repeat that again? So Ms. Mangu just said, when a man loves, he seeks no power and therefore he has power. What do you think that means? Does that make sense to you guys in a sense? I agree with what he said. Mm -hmm. Because um, if you don't love, then you won't have any respect. Then mm -hmm. you won't have any authority. But if you love, then you some people will respect you because you love others. Then you earn authority. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good. I think a big question here is, how do you get power? How do you have power without seeking power? So he says, if you love, then you are not seeking power. But then he says, but because you're not seeking it, that means you have power. So it brings us to the question, how can you have power if you're not seeking it? Uh, I think it just comes naturally when you love someone. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like families if you love each other, right? And then families like they sacrifice and understand each other, and they could give like really good things up for the sake of family. Mm -hmm. and, like even in hard times, they work together, and mm -hmm. then just. I think just having that kind of relationship mm. gives them like the power since they respect each other, understand each other, and mm. then they have like support, I guess. Mm. So I think like love itself gives the reason for power. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Anybody else want to think why or why not they think that is not true? If not, then we will keep going on to our next question. Which brings us to what differentiates power with love and power without love? What is the difference 
between someone who has power or authority and they have they also have love and somebody who has power or an authority but does not have love then what is the difference between the power that they hold um love is sincere uh you have to embrace everything to be able to love someone or something when you have the strength to embrace and love you're unbeatable i think power with love without love will never be invincible Okay. Anybody else? I agree to what Sue said mm -hmm. because power with love will try to embrace all the differences and other people. Mm -hmm. The power without love will try to like separate yourself mm -hmm. from others and like hate others. Mm -hmm. So what Xu and Juan just said is that power with love kind of gives the ability to embrace somebody even if you hold power over them or whether you hold authority over them or whether you have power that you're still able to embrace people if you have love so that i think that brings us to a question then is power without love is it effective is it does it work in a sense whether temporary or long term does power without love yes power without love um yes it might be effective mm -hmm. but it doesn't really last long mm -hmm. Because power without love is more aggressive and ruthless than power with love. Mm -hmm. And like the people who have that power use it to lash out the others whom they dislike and mm -hmm. try to put them down like beneath their feet. And they're like often arrogant. Mm -hmm. So that kind of personality and um, actions make the community like enrage mm -hmm. or something and that person's people mm -hmm. would turn against him and it could result to like a worse situation. Mm -hmm. Very good. You've pointed out something that I think a lot of people are thinking right now, even if they haven't said anything about it. We say of this thing that with great power comes great responsibility. And I think that maybe it is the same if you have power, then you have the responsibility to make sure that it is for a greater good and not just for yourself, right? So that is something for us to think about because power is not only found in places of like large authority. Yes, it can be. Like on national scale, you have presidents, prime ministers. Yes, they are all important, and it is important that they hold power with love. But sometimes it is, but literature itself, what we're looking at is literature. And oftentimes when we read literature, it is the, it is a summary of the human experience. Everybody who wrote literature was human. And because that, there is an aspect of every piece of literature that we can take away because they are speaking from experiences that whether directly or indirectly, every person has gone through in a sense. So thinking about that, hopefully that makes it so that it's not just very vague. It's not a topic that's like far, far away that we are talking about right now, but it's also something that can be applied to us as well. For example, for me, like if I say power with love, it can be whether it's at school or whether it's in my family. For example, if I like I have a sibling and because I'm older, I have power. And so by reflecting on these things, I can choose how I use that power and how it's important to me. So thinking about that as thinking about how all of this that we talk about as boring and as 
I'm going to use a very unprofessional word here, but as like Englishy and boring as it seems, it does in relation to us have something to matter. So hopefully that is something that we can take away. So moving on. In situations of hate, is there responsibility for both sides? If two groups are in conflict with each other, then is it one side that is always responsible for it? Or is it both sides that have this kind of responsibility? I think it's both. Because like, mm -hmm. all actions have consequences. Mm -hmm. And like, if a person and another's like, relationship isn't good, and then we have like a conflict, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter on who started it. But like, it's like, true that both of them had a grudge against each other and had bad feelings for each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why it sparked into like, like disagreement or something. So they both have responsibility over like what kind of feud they had or whatever. Mm -hmm. So well, then, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's reasonable. If it's a conflict, then both sides probably contributed to that conflict. Well then let's think about hate. If there is a hate between two groups, is one group responsible for the hate that they receive? Especially because right now in this book, we're looking at apartheid and we're looking at maybe a hate that doesn't necessarily have a logical basis. So in that case, is one group responsible for hate that they receive? <clears throat> No. No. Not if the ones who receive hate don't have, like, don't hate those people back. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one way to look at it. So if, if it's just receiving the hate, then it's okay. But if they're returning the hate, then they have a responsibility as well. Does anybody else want to add on to that? If one group is receiving hate, if there is a sense of tension between two groups, then are both groups responsible for that? Or is it necessarily going to be the responsibility of one group for hating or for causing a sort of tension? I think it will be depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it can be only the one group that can be responsible for it, or sometimes it can be both. Mm -hmm. So yes, it probably does depend on the situation that you're looking at. Sometimes it'll be both groups, and sometimes it may be one. So that is something that changes depending on what kind of specific situation you're looking at. And Ms. Mongo mentions here, he talks about in their specific situation, they're talking about their nation. And he says, I see only one hope for our country. And that is when white men and black men desiring neither power nor money, but desiring only the good of their country come together to work for it. And he says, he talks about this good of the country. So even if it's not a country, for a community, what can be considered good? You, are, you have a bunch of people who are working together to make a good community. Then what makes a, com a good community good? What about it makes it good? Like caring for each other. and doing good deeds for the people, not their own selfish desires. Mm. Mm. 
이게 왜냐면 방금 네가 한 말이 되게 깨져서 들렸는데 can you say that again? Uh, okay. So I I think like the things that could be classified good is like caring for each other and also doing good deeds for the people, not the person's own selfish desires. Okay, I'm having internet problems on my side. That's my fault. Okay. 그러면은 난 아직 okay. 정신 없어. Sorry, I just got logged out and I came back. Okay. 유겸이가 아까 하다 말 근데 근데 just I'm so sorry. I'm making you say this three times, but okay. Mm -hmm. So a good for a community could be a loving. And caring for each other, and, or mm -hmm. it could be doing good deeds for the people, oh. not mm -hmm. the person's own selfish desires. Okay. That's one way to look at it. So, do you think that then does like physical quality for the community, like their economic or political success, does that matter? In a way. In a way, okay. Because, like those kind of things, are their image, on other groups. Hmm. Like what they represent and stuff. Hmm. Okay. 자 그러면은 그거를 생각 좀 해봤고. 자, 이번에는 the discussion has been mainly me and Heather. <웃음> 자, 이번에는 유경이 말고 누군가 <웃음> contribute 조금 해줬으면 좋겠어요. So, Ms. Mango mentions he has a great fear. What is his great fear that he talks about? Here is that mm -hmm. one day that uh, the love will be turned to hate. Mm -hmm. So that's Ms. Mango's fear coming from a perspective where there is a racial tension between two groups, between, in this case, whites and people of color. And so what he's scared of is that, I got Jason, I got to him. He's scared that when we have come to loving, so there's been this hate, and he says, when they are turned to loving, they will find that we are turned to hating. So he's saying when, so in this situation, there have been a lot of hate towards a certain group, which for this situation was people of color. They were discriminated against and they were doing, they were um, not treated fairly like they should have been. And so Ms. Mango is a black guy in this situation. And he is saying that his great fear is that when they are turned to loving, when this group of white people in South Africa have realized that they've done something wrong and that they have come to make amends with the people of color, that the people of color will be so angry from the treatment that they've received that they will be, they will no longer be willing to work with the white people and they will say we don't want like a part of this we now it was it used to be you guys that hated us and now it's us that hates you because of the way that you treated us but on a smaller scale how do you guys think that this 
works in a sense. Do you think like it, cause I think it plays a part in our everyday lives as well. And when you, if somebody hates you first, does that mean that you can hate them back? I think it doesn't mean that we can hate them back, but but like it's really hard to not hate them when mm -hmm. like you get hated by them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of wrong to hate them back, but like it's really hard to keep yourself from doing that. So it's. I think that what is a shared thing is that if somebody hates you, even if you know that it's not right to hate them back, it is very normal for you to feel that you can hate somebody back because if you're receiving hate, then obviously you want to hate as well because there's something that you've received. So what Sky just said is that we know that it doesn't mean that we can hate them back. It doesn't mean that if we hate them, it is justified, but it is still very hard, right? So then what do you think you should do if somebody hates you? If somebody hates you, then what is a reasonable way to respond to that? Maybe try to work it out between you or like you can like ignore the person's hate but then you can't just do that forever so you can try to talk to that person or something maybe the reason for their hate has like something to do with yourself I'm so sorry, guys, that my Wi Fi is so bad. <laughs> Our last question. So, we have five minutes left of the class. What is. I think you gave me a book. Please repeat that again. I'm so sorry. Okay. I keep getting locked out. Like, a way to solve that kind of problem could be like you talking to that person who hates you okay or try to work things between you mm -hmm. so like you have to know the reason of their hate and you can try to understand it or mm -hmm. try to explain or you can reflect on yourself if that person's hate has something to do with your character or yourself mm -hmm. that's one way to deal with it so it's an individual, right? If an individual hates you for a certain reason. So what do you think if you're like, um, like Kumalo is in, it's a situation where it's two groups that are in tension with each other. If you are on the side that is receiving hate from another large group, then is there an adequate way to respond to that? ignore it ignore it like if that group hates your group it's like you ignore it until they like stop irritating you because when people hate they want to rile the other up but then if they don't have any like response to it maybe they'll like seize mm -hmm. or just hate from the inside well that's better than physically putting it out. That's good. Well, it is 827. So because we just went over our last question, I'm going to call it a day for now. So 
thank you guys, even though it was a very long and kind of tedious discussion to talk about. For those of you who did give your input, thank you very much for talking. And for those of you who are listening, thank you for listening. That is also part of discussion is listening. So that is that. And then I think Ricky can wrap up class. Okay, 얘들아, 오늘 대답하셔서 너무 고맙고 이렇게 오늘은 숙제가 없으니까 어, 야, 그럼 그냥 편하게 쉬고 다음 uh... 목요일에, 이번 목요일에 보도록 하자, 얘들아. 안녕하세요. 감사합니다. Guys, 수고했어. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.